Hey, what is up guys? It is your boy Speed here, and today I actually have an issue with a common idea in Dota. I have a problem, I, I really mean this, I have a problem with this idea that offlaners are always meant to be Rambo. I, I actually really, really disagree with it in a large portion of offlane games. Now, I know a lot of you are going to hear this and be like, Speed, what are you talking about? Come on, they... I'm not here for more like Venom jungling weird stuff. No, I watch a lot of offlane players, okay? Especially in high moral games, these pro games, and they're not playing Rambo. Their landing stages are not Rambo. They're not doing random plays and just running it down lanes and killing themselves over and over again. And I genuinely believe that that's like the, the common way to look at the offlane role. And it just gets people killed. They have no farm. They never get any items, and it's like no wonder people don't queue offlane. It's because they just kill themselves and hit no creeps. And so today, I want to look at DM on the Underlord, and I want to break this notion that offlaners have to be going crazy all game in order to be a good offlaner. It's just not true. In fact, I think a lot of the time, offlaners should farm like 75% of what safe laners do. Unless you have like a Sven or a Medusa, you know? In, in that case, well, probably not. But for a hero like Underlord, you're farming a lot. And if you don't farm a lot, you're gonna be a bad Underlord. It's as simple as that. So I'm gonna keep everything short. I'm not gonna be looking at really anything in one time speed. I wanna make sure, get it? I wanna make sure that this video is primarily concept based. I, I just wanna talk about ideas to fill you guys with good ideas that you can implement into your games right away. Well, if you appreciate that, smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. I would appreciate that a lot. It really does help us out. We post here every single day, making sure that you guys get really good Dota content that's gonna help you get to the next MMR bracket. Also, before I forget, sign up to the Game League website down below. It's in the description. And you can see how many times I've said that because I can say it almost in rap form. All right, but yeah, getting back to the concept. So the first one is understanding your lane. Okay, he's playing Underlord. Does Underlord kill heroes? The answer is, well, maybe later on, not early on. Most heroes at level one don't kill. And I actually think a lot of people don't understand this. Get this through your head now. And I know a lot of you listening are going to say, no, nah, not me. No, 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 no. <laughs> you know how many people, so on this 3k smurf series, you know how many people are running through creep waves to trade with me? You know how bad that is? And yet, everyone's doing it? You can't do it. And so let's look at DM play the Underlord here and take a look at his item build and his skill build and see how it applies to the concept of CS. Just get last hits. Early on, the main thing you should be doing and using your spells for is last hits and denies. Period. Right? And most offlaners are just going ham. They're constantly trading and constantly trying to win the lane. And then they're going to be like, I have Alina because I have Alina. I have to go psycho mode and trade till the game ends. And it's just simply not true. So you're going to see in this landing stage here, he takes his E at level 1. Pretty standard for Underlord. Uh, nothing crazy right now. The lane is way too close to the tower, so he pulls Creep Aggro. Gets a Deny, right? Going to continue to focus on a CS. Is 8-2 and two after 2 waves, which means he has perfect CS, um, right? Going to keep on going. Continuing to secure CS. The Q, he literally uses the Q. Why? It did, like, no damage. Why, why did he use the Q? to zone out for CS, to zone the opponents for CS. Literally just did that, just to zone them, to make this range creep a little bit easier, even though he didn't get it, and the melee creep before that, right? Even his item build, he understands, I'm Underlord, I can't pressure a drow, so he doesn't go boots, he doesn't go anything movement speed, just buys a bunch of regen. After that, he's gonna buy a Bassy, right? Because then, when he gets a bunch of levels, right? When he gets a bunch of levels, and his Lena gets a bunch of levels, they can start getting aggressive. So his item build is regen early on to sustain these early levels and then mana regen when they hit level three because that's when they can start putting on some pressure. You guys see the idea here? It's not going Rambo from the start of the game. It doesn't work. So skipping ahead here to the four minute and 30 second mark. Take a look at his last hits, everybody. He's number one. Go watch a bunch of three Camomar pubs. Come back to me and tell me how often offlaners are top CS. It's almost never, because they don't focus on it. It's insanity. Like, literally, the only advantage you can get when you're playing in even lanes, or just in early waves when you can't put pressure, is items. It's the only advantage, right? And so, like, please just play like this. I, I beg all of you, play like this. I even had to coach someone today. You cannot just go Rambo Especially if you're against an Omni Knight. It's just not going to work. You guys see what I'm saying? And now we are going to see our first kill of the game. 
and it primarily comes down to the fact that he hits a very early level 6 at minute 7. His Lena is also a decent level, she's level 3, not terrible, right? And we see some good coordination from the side of VP here. Really, it's the perfect gank, and I love it so much because, you know, due to the fact that he has such high CS, he's able to buy boots, and now meta boots, and so he can spam his spells. And he hits level 6 before the Drow hits level 6, which is a big deal. I don't think many people are willing to admit how bad it is or understand how bad it is for the enemy safe lander to hit six before you especially in a matchup where if matum man on the drow hits six first it can completely change how this entire game looks not just the lane the whole game right because all of a sudden maybe the drow could shut him down but no drow hits six later than him he hits six first and because of that he gets a point in the pit of malice and it sets up for a big kill completely game changing so the situation goes from a drow being able to zone out the underlord to underlord killing the drow. Now we see our first lane swap of the game here and he goes mid. He doesn't go Rambo. He doesn't push the top tier one tower. He doesn't run into the jungle to pressure the drow ranger. He TPs mid and shoves the mid wave. Yes, and you could do this on most offlaners and it's a good play. If you have a carry hero, you know, uh, that needs a lot of farm that can take the triangle, you can push in mid. Now you might be saying speed, what if my safe laner needs mid? Then yeah, you're gonna want to find a different lane to farm. You might even want a jungle, that's usually not the play, but most of the time what you'll do is you'll take the lane that your teammates don't want. In this case, they're very afraid of getting collapsed on mid. Why? Because the Mars is having a good game, so he could collapse on mid, right? That's what Mars does, they have the Phoenix, right? So they have dive, they have, you know, puck orb, they have uh, Ricky jump, so basically mid is quite dangerous this game. You know, anytime the enemy team has a lot of jump, mid becomes dangerous. If they don't have jump, mid's pretty safe. That's usually how I like to look at it. And you can see here, the Sven ends up wanting mid, so what does he do, right? What does DM do? He doesn't run into the triangle and is like, yo, Drow, here I come. My name is DM and I'm here to kill you. That's not what he's doing because it wouldn't work. And yet so many people would try that garbage. He just walks at bottom. Now to be fair, Underlord in particular has like no kill threat compared to other heroes like Mars could do some psycho stuff if you're playing Mars compared to Underlord but a lot of the time you, you should just be playing like him. Oh my Sven wants mid? Okay I will TP bottom. Wow pushes in bottom right now he's just chilling. This is what Underlord does shove some waves tries to get the man here and okay he gets ganked right nice little rotation from a tummy man bummer goes for the TP out nice. Forces rotations, enables his team to go top, allows his team to get the tier 1 top, all is fine and dandy. After that, he's gonna TP mid and he's gonna defend the mid tower. And honestly, I, I kinda just wanna end the video here. This is like the main points I had to go over in the video that I need to teach you all. But please, keep this in your mind. In the laning stage, get good CS. Get great CS. Crush them in CS. You will do so much better. You will kill them without realizing. You will get more kills by putting less pressure. Please look at it like that. And you will do so much better. And by the way, that applies to basically every role. I think offlaners just struggle with it the most. And yeah, the second thing is if your hero is a tower defender, defend towers. See how he's been doing that all game? If your hero is a wave shover, shove waves. That's what he's been doing all game as well, right? And this kind of just always applies, right? They end up taking this really nice fight as well because of it. Wow, what a great Lena stun. That was an incredible play. The Ricky just barely ends up going down. They trap him in. And uh, yeah, they pick up their first nice set of kills for the game. And as we skip ahead here to the 17 minute mark, I even want to show a shocking clip. An offlaner jungling. You heard that right? He's jungling. Everyone. Go tell Underlord that he's a horrible player because he's jungling on an offlaner. Boo! DM, boo! This is why you're not on Secret. But no, I'm, kid I'm kidding, but like, God, they even beat Secret. If jungling on Underlord or an offlaner from time to time beats Secret, you're chilling. I also, just for even more reference, you're gonna say, Oh, Speed, you, you intentionally picked a game where this happens. This it doesn't always happen. I literally just watched a game where Zai was losing on Mars. Wait, was it this exact game? Okay, it was literally this exact game. <laughs> I watched this game from Zai's perspective, and he jungled stacks. He took stacks as an offlaner. Morse, tell me the last time you've jungled a stack as an offlaner in a pub, unless you're playing like Axe and you made it for yourself, right? See what I'm saying? See what I'm saying, player? And now, my favorite part and the last part of the video is just to show the climax of all of his correct decisions. 
We're 21 minutes in here. He's level 14, which is a very high level. It's actually two levels above uh, his min invoker. To be fair, his invoker was having quite a mediocre game, but it's only one level below the Sven, a hero that usually exceeds everyone's level because, you know, he's really good at farming. But all in all, as you can see, he's a very high level, which means he's going to reduce Drow's damage by 25%. Obviously, that's huge for a hero that is all agility. Her, all of her damage is based on agility. Same thing with Ricky. This hero is all agility. So they get destroyed by Underlord. Look at Ricky's damage. Ready? 115. He'll hop into the Underlord range in a bit. Look at that. 115 minus 28. He loses 28 damage. That's a lot of damage. It really is. On top of that, he has Greaves. So this, this right-click agility-based team comp just gets dumpstered. It really does, right? It gets dumpstered. He also has a hood, so he's going to completely counter out the AoE damage from uh, Phoenix once he gets his pipe. And yeah, that's going to be the end of that story. Right? I mean that. Like, once he gets this Greaves pipe, Seeker does no damage. Especially with the Omni Knight, they literally do no damage. It's tough. Now, I know this game is just about over. I thank you all for watching. If you stay to the end, you're a real one. I appreciate it. Comment down below. Speed. We love League of Legends. You have to do it. You have to. You have no choice. That's right, I'm that evil. But yeah, this game ends up going down. And uh, yeah, main message, hit a lot of creeps. Don't run around, don't completely ruin your game, and you'll actually do a lot better. Remember, you're trying to find the balance between hitting creeps and creating space. And a lot of offlane players, the reason why they don't find this balance is because they don't think there should be a balance. They think that I'm going to go Rambo, I'm going to kill, kill, kill. And now I'm going to get a comment on this video and saying, Speed, but I play Slardar and he can't farm waves. Yes, you can. Just shove a wave here or there. It opens up the map. It gives vision and it gives you gold. And frankly, gold is good. They have a lot of letters that are about the same. And so, yeah, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one. And let's hope the patch is coming soon. Peace. But yeah, that's going to be about all, folks. Remember, click the link down below and subscribe to the Game Leap website where we have thousands of videos. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.